let's talk about the GEO method, G-E-O. GEO has to do with goals, that's the G, evidence, that's the E, and operation, that's the O. So when we look at the GEO model as a model for how we're going to present a class, how we're going to teach a seminar, how we're going to get things done, we realize that there is something that we're after. There's something that we're after. What do you want the group to learn? What is it that you want the group to learn? What is your goal? Now, you may think, well, of course, I want them to learn NLP. But realize that many speakers, when they, at least when they first start teaching NLP, that's not really their goal. Many times their goal is to get through the day. Many times their goal is to get through the seminar. Many times their goal is to cover all of the material that they've outlined, that they want to get to. Realize that the G in the GEO model is very important. It gets to the heart of what you're doing. So the difference is that if I were focused on, let's say I happen to be focused on just uh, presenting certain material. I go into a seminar and my goal and I'm, and I'm only subconsciously aware of this. I'm not even consciously aware of this. So this, that's, that's where this happens. My goal that I'm holding subconsciously is to just get through the material, to present A, B, C, and D on day one, and then E, F, G, and so forth on day two. And that's really my goal. That's quite a bit different, and it's going to yield uh, a much different results than if my goal is to make sure that everyone in that room understands what I'm talking about, that everyone in that room takes away something powerful, that everyone in that room gets an opportunity to demonstrate the proficiency to which they have mastered it. It's probably not going to be perfect, of course, but the degree to which they have mastered it in front of the class. If I have that sort of thing as a goal, then I have a much more powerful goal. So realize that it is possible to fool yourself. It is possible to think that, well, of course, my goal is to train people in NLP to the, to the best degree possible. But that's not what I see in many seminars. What I see in many seminars are other things. I see people with a goal of, of getting across how smart they are, of getting across just how, how powerful they are, of just getting through the material, of covering certain things, of, of getting their, their point of view across in, in a number of ways, their view of the world that doesn't even relate to NLP, of getting that across. I see those as goals. How do I know those are goals? Because of the evidence, because of what's actually being said and how it's being said. That speaker could have, or those speakers could have fully believed that they were of the mindset that their goal was to teach people NLP, but it's not, it's not really borne out in, what, in what's being seen. So you see things such as questions being dismissed, or as I mentioned before, questions being acknowledged and acting as if it's an intrusion, or just shooting off a lot of information without taking time to entertain questions, of skipping uh, demonstrations and just having a talk about what's going on and, and not demonstrating it. Certain things need to be demonstrated. Certain things don't need to be demonstrated. You're going to learn that from your students. You're going to learn that from class to class. Sometimes you're going to need more. Sometimes you're going to need less. Now, in this program, obviously, my goal was to educate you about NLP and to give you everything that I felt you needed. And what I didn't talk about that I felt you needed, I put in the written material. So to make it very well-rounded. So you have some things in the written material that I didn't cover and some things here that I didn't cover in the written material. So to make things well-rounded and to avoid redundancies. So you're not just reading everything that I presented to you. You're going beyond that. So what are your goals? And are you actually carrying out your goals in what you do? Does what you say match what you say that you want to do? When you, when you have an idea that you want to have the, the, everyone learning NLP and everyone able to do it, if, if that's your idea, then let's see it in the evidence. Let's see some evidence of that. Okay, let's look at the E in the GEO model. Evidence. 
what is the evidence? Let's say that your goal is to make sure that everyone learns what you're teaching. What evidence do you have that they're learning it? What is going to act as evidence to you? So I want you to evaluate yourself. Start paying attention to yourself, especially if you've been teaching for a while, because this is where I see it mostly, not in new teachers, but in, because new teachers want to save the world. If you're a new teacher, and you probably want to go out there and save the world and teach as many people NLP as possible and so forth, and that's wonderful. But teachers who have been teaching for a while sometimes get a little jaded or overly relaxed, to say it nicely. So look for, especially if you've been teaching for a while, look for evidence that these goals are actually being carried out. This doesn't have to do with other people evaluating you. Sometimes if you teach at a seminar, people will evaluate you and you get evaluation forms back. And sometimes people read them, sometimes they don't. That's not, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about is you evaluating yourself, you having a higher standard for yourself than anyone else has. They can judge you. They can, they can uh, assign a scale to you and give you a rating from one to whatever. That's not going to mean as much as you doing your personal best because your personal best, the standard for that should be much higher than what other people are expecting of you. That way, everyone will find that you're over delivering, which is great. So what's the evidence? And what I'm talking about is if you are looking at a group of people and your goal is to train them in NLP, there should be evidence of that. They should be learning things. The evidence is not them sitting there nodding their heads. Oh, okay, got that. Any questions? No? Okay, let's move on. That's not evidence. Evidence comes in the form of the evaluations you do, both informal and formal. An informal evaluation would be, uh, hey, Billy, why don't you come on up here and, uh, and demonstrate this? Or better yet, prep it and say, tomorrow I'm going to have random people come up here and demonstrate things and then call upon Billy to come up there. That's an informal evaluation. A formal evaluation would be something along the lines of a quiz or a final exam. Now realize that when you evaluate people, you can have them perform a practical exam and a written exam, and I recommend doing both. Now, as you know, as part of the trainings that I do, I have limited tools which I can use to assess you. So I have to get in there as much as possible to, to get into your, your mind and into your knowledge and find out how well you really mastered this information as well as I can without having you in person. So that can be accomplished through you filling out forms where you research something, you writing up case studies, you sending me videos of you demonstrating something. I have a number of tools that I actually can use so I can get eyes on you in a sense and see that you are actually learning it. I can get evidence. But in a seminar, you have so much more flexibility. They don't have to make a video and send it to you. They can demonstrate it right in front of you, and demonstrate it in front of the group, or you can have them demonstrate it in uh, a private setting. Realize that depending on the level you're teaching, perhaps if they're not doing so well in a public setting, it won't really matter because maybe they are just training with you so that they can be a practitioner or a master practitioner so they can go off and, and treat clients, patients, and work with them in a private setting. So maybe it would be more appropriate sometimes to say, okay, I'm going to have a, this private room over here. I'm going to take you individually and, and have you work with me as a client or have, have, uh, have you come in in pairs and one of you be the client and one of you will be the NLP practitioner. Let's talk about operation, meaning how will you get there? You've got this goal. You realize what you want to see. You've got the goal. You know what the evidence is going to be, but how are you going to get there? How are you going to get from your goal to the point at which you're actually having students produce evidence that's evidence to you that they're learning? Well, the way is through operation, and that comes from what you do. So everything that you do should be with the idea of your goal. Your goal is to train people in NLP. So let's see your demos reflect that. Let's see your talk reflect that. Let's see your PowerPoint reflect that. Let's see your manual reflect that. Let's see everything that you do and say reflect that. Everything about you in that seminar is moving them toward understanding NLP in a deeper way. So make sure that when you use the GEO method, which I think is, is a, a wonderful method to use to apply to, to any learning situation, make sure when you use it that 
everything fits together, everything makes sense, and everything is moving forward to ultimately accomplish the goals that you set out to accomplish.